Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the integumentary system on the exam. You can expect somewhere between eight and 11 questions related to integ, and this does cross all of the examination differential diagnosis and interventions section of the exam. But before I get to that, just want to say thanks. Thanks for what you do. Thank you for all the work and effort you put into this. And also want to give a quick reminder of the freebies we're giving out during the month of January. We've got our free regenerative medicine course. It's a free little mini course. I think you'll like that. It, you can find it. Easiest way to access that is go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. Regenerative medicine was added to the FSBPT content outline for the NPTE administration in 2024 and onward. And so I do have that available for an extremely limited time. Our regenerative medicine content for free. All you have to do is head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. Uh, the other thing, I, I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end, but we have a free on-site on, <laughs> I, I want to say on campus. It is technically a campus, but it's an on-site NPTE prep premium service that we're offering. Again, totally free. You just have to get yourself to Chicago the weekend of February 29th through March 2nd. Housing is included. Meals are included. All of the NPTE prep is included. You'll want to register for that as quickly as possible because those slots will fill up. You can find that again over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to sign up. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our practice question for today. The question today is related to the integumentary system. So again, somewhere between eight and 11 questions here. So as per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. So here you go. Which of the following descriptions best represents a stage two pressure injury? So which of the following descriptions best represents a stage two pressure injury? Number one, deep crater with undermining along the edge, two, non-blanchable erythema, increased pain, softer than normal skin, number three, superficial ulcer with intact blisters present, and four, wound bed obscured by eschar and slough. So we've got, again, deep crater. So which of the following best descriptions best represents a stage two pressure injury? We've got number one, deep crater with undermining along the edge, Two, non-blanchable erythema, increased pain, softer than normal skin. Three, superficial ulcer with intact blisters present. And number four, wound bed obscured by eschar and slough. All right, so this question talking about the pressure injury or the National Pressure Ulcer Advisory Panel's pressure injury staging model. So this is used by clinicians extensively for their examination of pressure ulcers and pressure injuries. And in fact, they did change the terminology a couple of years ago to reflect that not all, not all ulcer, let's see, not all injuries are ulcers. And so uh, they, they describe them now as pressure injuries rather than pressure ulcers generally, unless it has actually opened up into an ulcer, into some type of open wound. And so uh, the correct answer here is that third one, a superficial ulcer with intact blisters present. This is the most likely to be a stage two or a superficial partial thickness wound related to pressure. So this would be a stage two pressure injury. Uh, so as far as the characteristics here, uh, they would have a superficial ulcer. It could or it could have intact or ruptured blisters, either liquid filled, serum filled, or blood filled. However, it is unlikely there would be any slough or eschar present. So that means when you think about eschar and slough, we're talking about the necrotic tissue that is either exudate that has dried up or is actual dead skin that has, has aggregated inside of the wound. All of that is unlikely to be present in a stage two pressure injury. Rather, you'd see this superficial partial thickness ulceration that could have ruptured or intact blisters. Uh, sometimes you'd say that these folks, they would likely have some pain associated with it. Um, again, it, it, a lot of the skin is, is starting to degrade here. So you'd have some varying levels of pain. Um, but generally speaking, it would be a partial thickness uh, partial thickness wound bed where it's not extending into the underlying subcutaneous tissue. So these other answer options, uh, number one, a deep crater with undermining along the edge, that would be classified as a stage three pressure ulcer. So a stage three pressure, pressure ulcer, ulcer, this does extend into the underlying subcutaneous tissue. Uh, stage four, I don't have it listed here, but a stage four is likely to extend into the bone, tendon, or ligaments. 
so into obviously the very very deepest or underlying fascia so we've got uh, option two was a non-blanchable erythema increased pain and softer than normal skin that would be a stage one pressure injury this is because uh, the injury has not erupted into an ulcer yet but that non-blanchable erythema or change in skin color increased pain and softer than normal skin indicates that there is some type of deeper injury here and then finally the fourth option or the the final incorrect option a wound bed that is obscured by eschar or slough that would be classified as an unstageable injury which is likely to be a three or a four but because it's obscured by the eschar so that dried up exudate a kind of a cakey material it it prevents the clinician from viewing the entirety or the depth of the of the wound and is therefore technically unstageable until such as time as they're able to observe and visualize the depth or actually measure the depth of the wound. So other interesting things that'll come up on test day about the National Pressure Ulcer, Ulcer Advisory Panel's pressure injury staging model. Uh, one of the other characteristics is that, remember, you don't use this scale in reverse order. So it's kind of an interesting thing. You can, a stage one ulcer or stage one injury can turn into a stage two ulcer, but a stage two can never turn into a stage one. So rather you describe the characteristics of the wound as a healed or a healing or a, uh, uh, what do you want to say? A, an improved or, <laughs> um, yeah, a healed over. Usually we talk about it in, 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 the classification of being healed over. And so a, a stage two that is healed, it would not become a stage one. Rather, it would always be a stage two. You always classify it by its worst characteristic or by its worst staging so that other clinicians, when they jump in, they'll say, okay, yeah, this, this clearly was a very deep wound that is now healing significantly, but I still want to watch out for it and watch for the characteristics of a deeper wound if it was to re-erupt or re-rupture. And the other thing is for... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's also for reimbursement that a patient with a stage four pressure injury has uh, ha requires more intervention because it is much more severe. And so if a stage four was then reclassified as a stage one, they would not be eligible for that advanced intervention that they require. And so therefore, a, a stage four will always remain a stage four uh, as throughout its entire process. It will never be used in reverse order. So I guess that's the big key here is it's never used in reverse order. Um, you'll definitely need to know this for test day. When you talk about the pressure injury, uh, the National Pressure Ulcer Advisory Panel, the NPUAP, its pressure injury classification system, you will find that this this is uh, definitely going to be tested on test day. In fact, I'd, I'd put this at like a 90% category of a 90% likelihood that this will actually show up on test day. So there you go. There's your practice question about the pressure injury staging model. Uh, so just one last little bit about our on-site, on, well, I'll call it an on-campus, our on-campus uh, NPT preparation uh, event that we're having on February 29th through March 2nd. So that's a Thursday through Saturday. You have to get yourself to Chicago. So it's in Chicago. But if you can get yourself to Chicago, the, everything else is free. So you get free housing, free meals, free NPT prep. Plus, that includes all of our NPTE pre premium preparation materials. So we're talking about all of the exams, the pre-recorded material, in addition to our one-day on-campus event. So really, you get the, the full spectrum of our full suite of NPT prep material. Plus, in addition to that, they, they're bringing in another guest speaker. And uh, Connor Pierce, he'll be talking about the after the DPT, how to repay your student loans in the most economical way possible. So again, something that is going to save you a ton of money. Uh, so even just that, it'll be totally worth the, the time to come, if not for the NPT prep, but also for how to repay your student loans for the least possible. So all that said, this is February 29th through March 2nd. Registration ends at the end of January. So you've got to register and apply to attend this by the end of January. Uh, to do so, the easiest way is to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you'll be able to easily register. And then hopefully uh, you'll be able to make it there. And I'll see you there on that weekend. Again, February 29th, Leap Day through March 2nd. It's Thursday through Saturday. And it'll be two nights. Again, the housing is covered. The meals are covered. The NPT prep is covered. Really, everything is covered by our corporate sponsor, Athletico. They're going to help you out there. Uh, plus, there's no commitment. You don't have to commit to, to any employment agreement or contract or anything like that. Uh, if you can get yourself there, 
It's a great way to prepare for the NPT. I think you'll really enjoy it. So we've done these events a couple of times now and they've been super fun. It's really cool to get people coming in from all over. Usually folks are coming in from all over the Midwest, but we did have some folks coming in from farther out of state uh, for our, I think for two times ago, we had someone coming in from, from several states away and drove all day to be there. And they were just so excited to be there and be a part of it. So I hope you'll you'll join us there. Again, the easiest way to register for that is to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. All right, so we'll bring it to a conclusion here today. Thank you again for all you do. Appreciate you sticking with me. Appreciate you spending time with me on these, these podcasts. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got. Hope to catch you in the next one. Take care, everyone. We'll crane fist pumps all around. Have a great day. 